Hi guys, welcome back. And if it's your first time here, my name is Vanessa Lee. Welcome. So yeah, today's video it will be my top seven plants of the month of September. I cannot believe how quickly this month went. This month went in a flash and so much has happened. Um, yeah, I've got builders coming, so everything has been switched around. I've got extra furniture in this room and things are looking a little chaotic. So excuse the mess in advance. And what else did I want to tell you before I get into? Oh, yeah. So in August, <laughs> in August, I bought. I think about seven plants. Well, seven anthuriums, and I may have bought one or two other plants, but they're just not popping into my head right now. Um, so yeah, it's been really difficult choosing just the seven and not homing in on my new plants. So I'm trying to be fair, you know, I'm looking at the entire collection and what they've achieved this month, <laughs> looking at their achievements, you know. And yeah, so I'm going to be sharing seven plants. I have chosen two from the latest batch that I've just bought. And yeah, I'm really excited to show you what they've been up to. And I'm going to spin the camera around so that you can actually see the plants, where they actually live, and what kind of lighting they're getting. And I'll talk to you a little bit about what substrates they are in and a bit of a backstory maybe. Okay, so let's get into this video. I'm gonna turn this camera around. Okay, so we're gonna start with my Anthurium polydiflorum. And this is a new leaf, the first leaf that has grown here in my home since I've owned this plant. I've only had this plant for just over a month. I bought this one for my birthday and oh, I'm just absolutely loving it. I love this long strappy leaf and it's got like a bit of a twinkle to it. I was hoping the sun would be on it. Oh, you can kind of see it there. So she's, oh, and beautiful light green. So she can definitely tolerate slightly higher light. And yeah, when I first got it, I bought this plant actually at the rare plant market from a planty house and I'm so, so obsessed with it. I just love, love this plant so much. I've been looking for it for a while and yeah, I just knew that if, if they had them there at the festival, this was the plant I was going to get. And I would have been quite happy to have left with just this plant, but of course I went nuts and bought a whole bunch of others. She came in sphagnum moss. Um, I changed her into a non-drainage. She's got liquor boards at the bottom. There's no water currently in the reservoir, but you can see that the soil is moist. It's a chunky aeroid mix which is like quite barky. It's got some cocoa core in there, but not much. Permis, um, gosh, worm castings, all the things. And a layer of sphagnum moss on the top, which is also quite moist. So she definitely doesn't need watering. And this kind of long piece here, oh, this long stem here, is actually where the leaf kind of was let out by. So I don't know if that's going to become brown and shrivel off like this bit, like a caterpillar would normally. Time will tell. I'll keep you updated on that. And she's also got two little leaves coming. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can see one there and then one that's quite close to the sphagnum moss. And yeah, she's currently facing a southeast facing window, which is there. And she's also under plant lights. So she's definitely getting the best of both worlds. She was actually living where the Cronianum, where this Hoya is currently. But yeah, this 
with a whole different setup before. So yeah, that's number one. So the second is another anthurium, another new anthurium, and it's my crystallinum, super silver. And I've actually got two crystallinums and it was quite difficult choosing between the two, but since this one gave me the largest leaf, look at that leaf. That was my first leaf grown here. Um, I just can't actually believe what it's given me. I'm very, very happy with that. And I do think, so where did I get this plant from actually? This one is from Grow Tropicals. Yeah, I bought this one and I bought the one, the other crystallinum that's behind at the same time for my birthday. Um, so again, I've had it just over a month and she is in a chunky aeroid mix with some lecker balls at the bottom you can see there's condensation so there's definitely enough moisture in there um the leaf before that one which wasn't grown here was this one and look how perfect this one is she's oh she's everything so cute this one did come out a little funky but look at the size of it and I do think that this particular this leaf grew so large because I used great white on the roots when I repotted this plant. It did come in like just a kind of normal cocoa core and perlite, I think. You can see some yummy, yummy roots going on. Oh, she's really heavy. <laughs> she's quite heavy. I'm gonna put her down again. Yeah. So that's that one. And yeah, I was trying to like figure out what was the difference because now the difference between this one, the crystallinum super silver and the one behind, which is called the pink edge because this one also has quite a pink edge to her. But to the touch, when you touch along the vein, um, it's flat on the surface and then I can feel that it's risen on the back. Whereas this one, it's risen on the top and it's risen on the back as well. So like this centre, I don't know what they call that. If you know the name of that, please let me know. I do need to um, advance my knowledge on the leaf. I will actually make more of an effort. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's kind of risen. And yeah, I mean, the venation, of course, does look slightly different. But yeah, it's just interesting that she's also got that pink edge. Should we have a look at the back of her? Let's have a look at the back. Yeah, I mean, nothing amazing going on at the back. And I, yeah, I really can't see much of a difference at the back. These two little baby leaves, so cute, so cute. Anyway, yeah, she, that is number two. That is the second one, and I am obsessed, obsessed with this plant. Oh, I wonder what she's gonna do next. Oh, I can't wait. So, moving along to number three, which is a Hoya. It's my Cronianum Super Silver. And yeah, when I first got this plant, I had a couple of people tell me that the, it's a problem child. It's gonna drop leaves, it's gonna be really difficult. And you know, for those first couple of months, it was not the easiest of plants. I bought this one from Grow Tropicals also, but she has been growing. I mean, look, she's trailing. She was living up here on the shelf, but she's kind of just taking up a lot of the light which I need for my Australis Lisa. My Hoya Australis Lisa was kind of just in the dark and she still is in, in the dark really. But yeah, I'm just absolutely loving this plant. It's in La Chusa Pond, non-drainage with lecker at the bottom. I did give it a water two days ago. 
Let's see if there's anything left, actually. She is quite thirsty. I have noticed that. Look how much is left. Oh, half. This is like two days later. And I filled that reservoir. Roots are nuts. Lots and lots of juicy, juicy roots. And let's zoom in on some beauty. Pretty, pretty leaves. Oh my God, look at that half moony one. So cute. I quite like these dark ones with the splashes as well. They're really cute. They're like pixelated. Oh, she's stunning. And look at that. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I'm not doing anything. It's um, anything special with her. I literally just water it. And I do very, very little. I don't think I've ever dusted this plant. I probably should do that. I should do that with all the Hoyas, really. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm just amazed. And when I first bought the plant, because I was completely freaked out, I was going to lose it. Because it, it didn't travel. I mean, it didn't travel badly. But, you know, it didn't look great when it arrived. Um, so I did take a cutting as insurance and that is up here and also growing like a beast already trailing and that's something that just happens suddenly like in the past month or two so I'm kind of thinking this plant is going to be more of a grower in the autumn time and I've noticed that with a couple of my other plants as well they do seem to like when autumn hits they'll just do a mad burst of growth so yeah oh gosh look at her and that minty I love that I, I love having all the different kind of tones of green and leaf shapes like it just kind of creates I just like that variety and it just it just breaks up the the image which is oh my god look at that I mean, like the two of them together, that is a photo right there, isn't it? I need to start getting back onto Instagram and taking some photos. I mean, I'm packing these guys up soon, so I probably should do that soon. Okay, let's move on to the next plant, which, where are we? We're number four now. And it's another Hoya, and she is tiny. But what I began with, I'll put a photo on the side so you can see. She came with about three or four leaves, I believe. And yeah, she just lives here above this grow light. And I just love like the way it's growing. It's like a little peacock, like a fan of leaves. And she's got two little ones coming. Let me get her down actually. Let's bring you down. So this one was given to me in a plant swap, a very generous plant swap. And yeah, it came as a cutting. You can have a look at that video. I think it's, oh, I don't know the name of that video. I can't remember, something about Hoyas. <laughs> Hoyer unboxing, maybe? I think there's two, there's two videos worth watching if you're interested in cuttings and getting them to root and all that kind of stuff um it was quite slow to root i've got to say but once it got going once it had established a really nice root system the leaves just have just been popping one after the next when did i get this plant i probably had this for about five months i'll put the correct time up if i am wrong and let's see if we can see some roots um, can't really see, oh, I, is that a root? Is that roots? I think that's roots. They're quite fine and like they've got like a pinkiness about them, which is interesting. And yeah, I'm just like every day, I'm just kind of, I don't know why, but every day I've been looking at this plant. I haven't told you what it's called. It This is the Hoya Breviolata. And yeah, look at that tiny, tiny leaf. How cute is that? 
just as adorable and this little cupped kind of yeah really cute really really cute okay so that is what are we on <laughs> i think we're on four yeah we are i'm gonna put her back in her spot oh let's get a bit of light on her pretty and shiny yeah we put her back on the wall. Okay, next we are moving on to my philodendrons. I'm going to start with, I mean, this is in no particular order, really. Or is it, actually? It kind of is. Um, I'm going to start with this one. I mean, the anthurians, most definitely. Oh, my God, they're just so hot. Um, but this guy is so, so hot and just does not stop growing. This is my Philodendron Splendid. She has been growing like a beast. This is a brand new leaf. Look how immaculate that leaf is. It's just so perfect. Oh, it's dreamy. It's so dreamy. This plant is actually a hybrid. You can see like the pinkiness of the back. So its mother parents is a varicosum, which that's where that pink blush comes from. And then the other parent is the Melona Chrysum, which I have one right here. She's tiny. Well, the leaves are tiny. <laughs> um, so that's where that kind of length of leaf comes from. But I also really love this kind of waviness, like this kind of surfy look that it's got going on. It is really, really pretty. I've got two stems in here. I actually have another two stems growing in the hallway. They're just on a stick. I don't know why I haven't put it on a moss pole yet, but I haven't. And this is the latest leaf on the one stem and you can see there's a new one already on its way. And I've noticed that is just its pattern. It just does that. And then on the other stem, we have this leaf. <gasps> Look how big it is. Oh my God, I just realized it's sized up again and it's only just unfurled. It's just, I don't know what's going on with this plant. It is nuts. It's really worth, let me just scoop her out a bit. Yeah, it's, it's a, pl a plant worth getting in my opinion. So I just want you to see this leaf. Oh my gosh, she's golden. Yeah. And then we do see the next leaf coming right behind. I'm going to have to put some more moss in that pole because, yeah, oh, and it's quite dry. Every day I have been filling the cup to the top and it just gets a cup every day. In the winter, I'll probably like just, I won't have to do that as often. We'll see. I mean, once the heat is on, like my heating, it's going to make things different. I'm staring at the back of this pole because I wanted to show you the roots. Can you see? Oh my gosh. The whole thing is just full of roots and that happened very, very quickly. So this is clearly going to be a really easy plant to propagate. And yeah, she's on, she's probably about, I don't know, two foot. I mean, yeah, she's quite sizable. She came as quite a big plant and it was a bargain. I bought this one from Plants for All Seasons. Oh my gosh, love that store. I haven't actually been looking online for plants. Well, that's a lie. Oh my God, I can't believe it just came out of my mouth. I mean, okay, I get sent an email and I quickly click on it and I'll have a look, but I haven't been like shopping, shopping, like looking properly, like... You know, when you just spend hours like, right, I'm going to go through every single anthurium they have. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I will keep an eye on them, though. Um, but this was a wish list plant like all of them, actually. All of the plants that I've shown you have been wish list, wish list plants. And I bought this one not so long ago. I think I've had this one about four months, maybe. I'll put the correct date up. Time is flying and it may have been longer actually. And I'm just finding it really very, very easy. Much easier than the Malona Chrysum. Oh my gosh, definitely 
100% easier. And had I have had, I don't know, I do like my like Malona Christ and there is like quite a clear difference between the two. But if I had to choose between the two, most definitely the Splendid would be the one. If I could only buy a certain amount of plants and it was the choice between the two, the Splendid wins hands down, hands down. Although there's been pests on there, I don't see any damage. They all have been sprayed. Whereas with the Malona Chrysum, the damage is quite severe. You know, I'm, I don't know if this one actually has that much damage that I can show you. That is a burn from the chemical that I used. Um, yeah, but when it gets damaged, it, it just, you know, it's not forgiving. And that leaf is yellowing because what did I do to the plant that and it didn't like that? I did something and it just it was just like, yeah, don't like that, I'm dropping a leaf. And so that's on its way out. <laughs> and the next plant is my fuzzy petiole. Now I never thought that this plant would ever be on my wish list. It has been living in the box, in a humidity box for the longest time. I finally got it on a moss pole and she's sizing up. That newest leaf is looking very pillowy and just adorable and perfect. This one grew inside the humidity box. And I, I don't know, she got spider mites whilst being in the box, which is so weird. So, so I took everything out of that box, washed the box, sprayed everyone down. But you can see like that leaf is quite thin, but it's really quite bouncy as well. And I'm quite liking that look. It kind of reminds me of the McDowell, but with this one, the pe petioles are quite fuzzy. Can you see how fuzzy they are? And I think that older it's, the more mature it becomes, the fuzzier that will look. There are about three plants in there. Let's have a look actually. Um, so that's one, two. Yeah, there's three plants in there. Um, the latest leaf from the medium sized plant. Gosh, it's really hard to get in there. <laughs> Oh, the medium sized plant is, I think, on this side, and that was her latest leaf. And then the smallest one gave me this one, which is a little crumpled. I don't know what happened there. I think that's just damage from struggling to unfurl. Hopefully, that's damage from that. Let's have a look on the other side. Oh, she's quite pinky on the other side as well. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, like, it's literally, I bought the plant from Grow Tropicals. I'll put the correct date out, but I can't actually remember when that was. I think I've had this about eight months, and it's just been living in a box. And, yeah, the plants that live in boxes generally don't get much of my attention, because I just know that they're self-sufficient, they're just, you know, they can just get on with it. So I hadn't really noticed, I hadn't really like explored the plant that much. So that's why I'm like, oh, it's pink on the back. But then some, yeah, some of the leaves don't have it. They're just like, it fades, I'm guessing. Um, yeah, so I'm still kind of discovering more and more about this plant. This leaf did not grow in my care. This It came with this one and that's why I was like, okay, interesting. Yeah, I was kind of slightly deflated, to be honest, when I bought this plant. I was like, oh, okay, that's not quite what I was expecting. And then it went in the box. But now it's out of the box, and I think the more mature it gets, the more I'm going to love this plant. Every day I'm wanting to have a look and see what's going on. And again, there is a lot going on. We've got a new leaf coming right there. We've got new leaves coming here as well. Oh, yeah, we've got, it looks like two in there actually. Yeah, there's two leaves growing in there. I do not know what is going on. 
<laughs> Maybe I've got four plants in there. Um, yeah, I kind of, <laughs> yeah, I do actually, yeah, I have four plants. So at first I separated the two largest and then put the two smallest together and the two largest together. And they were just on a bamboo stick in a box. And then I put them together. But the smallest, smallest one was really tiny when I put it in this pot. And it just seems to have sized up quite a bit. And that's it there, I think. Yeah, that's it there. It's just, yeah, it's just really interesting. That um, I think moss poles are like definitely the way to go. And I'm looking forward to getting a lot of my other plants onto moss poles. Okay, so I think I've talked enough about this gorgeous plant. Did I tell you what it's called? Probably not. It's the Philodendron Fuzzy Petiole. Okay, so the last plant is in my hallway and I've got a load of rubbish in the hallway. So I'm just going to scoop that all into my bedroom and then I'll show you the last plant. So yeah, a lot has happened in the hallway as well. I've um, taken away my shelving and these metal stands are just here for now, but they will be moved into the living room and all these plants have to also go in the living room. But yeah, this is what it's looking like these days. Quite bare, but still cute. Um, yeah, so anyway. So the next plant is my Skindapsis exotica. Now this plant has just amazed me. It lives in the hallway, so I generally see it on my way backwards and forwards from work, but it's just a quick glimpse and then I'll water it. It is in Lechuza Pond with a reservoir. So that's another reason why I probably don't look at this plant as much as I probably should. I'm watering, I'm probably filling the reservoir and leaving it for about two weeks, to be honest. And it's just grown. I gave this plant a chop. Gosh, when did I do that? It would have been spring, maybe. I'll put the correct date up. And I think I did a video of that as well. It might be a short, I'll put the name of that video up as well. Um, but yeah, so this is where I cut it and it grew this. And then I cut it somewhere around here as well, but it is just trailing all the way. <laughs> Let me get around here, pick it up actually, there we go. Yeah, so it's trailing all the way around. I mean, it's just nuts. I, I mean, this plant just grows like crazy. I probably will chop it again. I do have um, the parts that I chopped off, I, I am propagating and I must say they do not root quickly. They've been in that box for the longest time. Some of the leaves have roots and two of them do not. So I will be doing like a video on my propagation boxes because they're just nuts, they're out of control. I need to pot some things up from them. Um, but yeah, this plant is amazing. And I think if I could give this, the light that it's getting at the moment is from a southeast facing window. By four o'clock, it's quite like very, very low light out here. So I do feel that if I could get this into a higher light, then I would get leaves that weren't so far apart from each other because it's very leggy at the moment. Um, but I do like it when it's just like a little bush like that. But I just wish this bit would propagate better like the. It's just such a shame. If you know actually of like a trick to propagating from cuttings from the Skindapsis Exotica. If you have like a good experience, please share that with me. I currently have mine in a box with some sphagnum moss, but I haven't tried, I did try water and I don't know, they just look like they're gonna die. So I quickly put them in the box, but yeah, do let me know what you do. Maybe I'll try using some great white, 
and then chucking them in the box. Yeah, I feel an experiment coming on. But oh my gosh, I just love this plant. It really is quite a showstopper. Print on that is just the name Exotic. Exotica is the perfect name for this plant. And she's got like a kind of shimmeriness about her as well. I wish the light was shining on her. But the leaf is, I think it's just beautiful. It really is. Stuck. Oh, there we go. You can see a little bit. I mean, it's a bit overcast today. The leaf is also quite thick and velvety. Yeah, it's got like a suedeness about it. Yeah, it's more suede -y. And I love this kind of little, how the, what do they call these? Little ear, earlobes, um, how they overlap. So pretty. And each leaf is just so perfect and intricate, like unique, each leaf. I mean, look at that. It's like, <laughs> and they're all going in these. I don't know, it's just such a fascinating plant. And I feel that this would make the most amazing print design. Really, really stunning. Let's see if I go on the other side, you can get more light on it. Not really. And I've had this plant definitely about a year. When did I buy this plant? Yeah, I think I've had it about a year. I will put the right dates all of these plants up but very easy generally when you start seeing this curling that's a sign that it needs water so I mean I did water this plant not that long ago I didn't fill the reservoir but she still has some in there so maybe it just needs a little time um, but eventually she will be in the living room with everybody else and I will find her a nice sunny spot okay so that is the last plant so I'm going to turn the camera around and say goodbye and yeah one last look <laughs> at this beauty so yeah I hope that you enjoyed the video and um, that it was fun looking at my top seven favorite plants and let me know if you share any of the same top favourites this month and definitely give me some tips if you have them. Leave that in the comments down below. I'm sure everybody will enjoy having a look at that as well. The community is growing and this is fabulous. I'm just, oh my gosh, so much has been happening. Oh my gosh, I've been getting really cool notifications from YouTube creator um apparently um there's i can do a community now um i can create like a membership thing i need to look into all of this i really don't know what i'm talking about right now and there's like a a thank you button <laughs> i'm like what 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 like literally every day i'm getting like another email another email i'm like oh <gasps> Something's happening, something's happening and it's because of you guys. Like this is all happening because you have subscribed and that you come back and you watch my videos and that you hang out with me and I really appreciate you guys. And I just wanted to take a moment and say thank you. And I've had lots of new subscribers recently. So welcome, welcome. I'm so pleased that you're here. But as usual, I'm gonna ask you to Put the thumbs up because we are so close so close to hitting a thousand i think that's the number that we need to make this this channel kind of grow and get to a stage where i can start putting more energy more time and more money into it oh wow 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 yeah, give me a thumbs up um it really does help with the algorithm and it also tells me that you enjoyed the video and that this kind of content works well for you um if you haven't hit the subscribe button um go ahead and do that so i would really appreciate you um and your time and 
I would love to get to know you, so leave a comment, say hi. I will most definitely say hi back. I never ignore people. Oh, I try not to. <laughs> um, wow. Anyway, I am going to let you guys go. Thanks again. Have a fabulous week and I will see you here again very soon. Until then, bye.